Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. The first big game of the La Liga season featured Valencia and Atletico Madrid fighting to a 1-1 draw. How did Atletico go about their business? How did Valencia ensure that they got a point against the side that are expected to win the league? Don't worry, here at the interviews, we've got you covered. So on this edition of the interviews, we're going to break down the 1-1 draw between Atletico Madrid and Valencia. So here are the interviews. We are going to break down La Liga games. And the first big game of the weekend involved Atletico Madrid traveling to Valencia. In today's video, we're going to break down what Atletico Madrid did right to stop Valencia, Antoine Griezmann's role in all of this, and how Valencia responded. When we do break it down, we have Valencia in a 4-4-2. They have Mina and Rodrigo up front, Soler and Waz on the flanks. And in midfield, they went with Condogbia and Parejo. We look at Atletico Madrid, 4-4-2 as well. Diego Costa and Griezmann up front, out in wide areas, Carrera and Lamar. And in midfield, they went with Saul and Koke. We think about how Atletico Madrid drop off into two banks of four they did that here again both sides not looking to play out of the back when you think about a 4-4-2 it's very simple in the sense that when they go up against each other you always always fear that both sides are going to cancel each other out because it's very simple you have the forwards pressing the center backs Technically, you have the wide players dealing with the full backs. You have the midfield against the midfield. And then, like I said, you have the forward against the forwards. And then when you look at that, you wonder who's going to get the advantage. How are teams going to break each other down? Obviously, one player is marking one player. But Atletico Madrid often dropped off. They weren't looking to press from the front as often as they usually do. But when they do drop off, it's just so composed. You know what they're going to do. Here, you have Mina and you have Rodrigo. Uh, with the center backs, you have Koke and Saul dropping off. And what's really key here is the fact that you often have um, Griezmann and you have Diego Costa sitting on Condogbia and Parejo, ensuring that they are unable to really gain control of the game, dictate the tempo, push forward. But what happens here is that as they push forward, obviously we have um, Correa and Lamar narrow in midfield as well and when they look to when the ball goes out to the fullbacks in Pacini and Gaia you'd have the either Lamar pushing out to his left or you'd have uh, Correa pushing out to his right but what you do have here is this you have Costa and you have Griezmann sitting on the midfielders and even if they look like they may find an edge. What you have is Saul and Koke just stepping up. It's somewhat of a box to ensure that they really can't build out of the back. And if you push it out into wide areas and you get the and you get the wide players going forward, you have Juan Fran, you have Philip Luis tight. You if you push out to the fullbacks, you have Lamar stepping in. You have Correa stepping in. So how were Valencia really gonna create chances? And that's where they struggled here. In the first half, you look at it and you think about the only way they were getting chances were when Rodrigo was dropping off. He dropped off into Spock to space. He knew Godin wouldn't always follow him there, pick up the ball. There was one time he combined with Mina. Mina switched out to Daniel Waz. Waz crosses the ball into the box no one gets to it but what we often saw is Rodrigo dropping off picking up the ball turning and then firing shots from distance Atletico was okay with that because Valencia weren't getting in behind their defense they trust their goalkeeper and Jan Oblak that he will be able to deal with those efforts from distance and Atletico weren't breached in that sense but they did off cause them a few problems we have Mina dropping off at one point fooling Savage where Savage has to pull him back and he is booked but that was the risk that they were taking at times when they were bet when they were beat so there's one time where Mina did beat Savage Philip Blue Felipe Luis or Juan Fran were able to come across. The fullbacks were there to offer support. And that is where Atletico Madrid really thrived. And Valencia didn't really create many chances in the first half. Rodrigo dropping off to flash shots from distance. But Valencia didn't get in behind them. How did Atletico really get forward? Well, you have to think about Antoine Griezmann. Him and Correa didn't really play a key role. Because when you look at how Valencia are lined up, you fear that Pereo and Condogbia just need a someone to sit into midfield to clean up the space for them because what was happening was that 
Correa was often picking up the ball in these narrow pockets or playing in the pockets in behind. And Antoine Griezmann was picking up the ball anywhere he wanted to in those spaces in midfield. Dropping off, picking up the ball, forcing Pereira to foul him, drifting out to the right to get on the ball, linking play with his midfielders, helping Atletico push forward. Griezmann was doing it all. Kondogbia and Parejo were unable to stop him and that was a big problem because when Griezmann's getting forward and he's linking play and creating chances that is going to harm your side and he was involved in the two best chances of the first half one being the goal where it's simply just Koke finding him in that pocket of space picks it up he gets across Parejo obviously the Valencia line is pretty um, discombobulated he plays a reverse pass into Correa who is unmarked he fires his shot past the keeper they go up 1-0 there was another chance in particular that really summed up his all-around play it's Co it's Godin clearing his lines and what happens here is that Griezmann nods the ball into Correa and what happens here is that Waz follows him and then you have Gaia following him as well Griezmann continues his run into that right channel and Correa finds him and then what happens there is that Costa continues his run and Griezmann plays into Costa who goes 1v1 with Garay, cuts outside and forces the keeper into a great save for a corner kick. Griezmann was everywhere linking play. There, he was often picking up the ball in those pockets of spaces. There was one time where he did towards the end of the half and he was slid the ball into Costa to break him behind. Costa was fouled. Possibly could have been a sending off. It wasn't but it just goes to show what threat that Griezmann was offering in the second half he kind of really flamed out a bit he was picking up the ball in key areas but often just misplacing that final ball often getting in congested in those tight spaces and was unable to, to connect with his teammates but in those two instances that we just broke down that is where Griezmann was really dominating the game dropping off into those pockets of spaces there was n points where he would pick up the ball in behind the midfield with ease one in particular just place it in behind for Costa but he overhits the pass but like I said dropping off even when it comes to dispossessing Parejo dropping off and dispossessing Gaia and then looking to link play with his teammates picking up the ball wherever he wanted to and he was making the difference for Atletico Madrid in the second half Valencia have to push forward but the problem here was that Atletico did drop off a bit deeper and that is how they ended up conceding the goal because Valencia didn't look like they were going to score it just didn't know how to get in behind they didn't know how to stop this side but as Atletico dropped off a bit deeper what happened was that there was no longer a press on Kondogbia. There was no longer a press on Parejo. They were able to pick up the ball in deeper positions. And when you look at how the goal is scored, it's just a simple breakdown from Atletico. Kondogbia does pick up the ball from deep, but what happens is he floats it into the box. Juan Fran is deeper than the ball, than he should be. Waz is able to nod it into Rodrigo. Godin missed times his header and it's able for Rodrigo to chest the ball down he has runners and Savage and Luis running towards him but he fires a shot past the keeper when you think about it it is a breakdown but it goes to show that Atletico Madrid were doing a good job with Costa and Griezmann sitting on Condogbia and Parejo and ensuring that they were unable to get onto the ball you think about the second half as it were on they did hit the post from a set piece Valencia but again it's Atletico that's really changing the game really trying to get stuff going. Koke was spectacular in midfield, linking play with his teammates, spreading short passes, spreading long diagonals. There's one play in particular where we have him spreading the ball from deep to Juan Fran. We have Correa who is in a cent more central position running off because what happens is that when Juan Fran is pressed, Obviously, their player's out of the position, so they have the fullback push out to him. We have Correa run across, get the ball in half space, delivers a great cross in the box, but Costa doesn't attack it like he normally does. But as the game were on, Koke was just setting the tempo. He was ensuring that he was dictating the play, connecting passes. He was varying his play, long balls over the top, short passes, breaking the lines, finding Griezmann in behind. And that was how Atletico were really going about their business. They did make um, offensive changes. They brought on Vitolo. They ended up bringing on... Um, after Vitolo, they ended up bringing on Jelson Martins, who played on the right, drove forward whenever he could, but often locked that final ball when he ran at Gaia. So that was a big problem with 
with Valencia. They ended up bringing Gamero on. They bring they brought on Mishi Bashuai. Um, eventually, Atletico looked like they were going to settle for the point, and they brought on Thomas Partey. But when you look at this as a whole, Atletico were really comfortable, not really conceding many chances. And behind, towards the end, was when there was a big problem, and there were two chances in particular when Atletico were were caught higher up the pitch. And what happens is that it's just two direct plays that really almost see them lose the game. It's just a simple ball out of the back from Parejo. It's behind Koke Saul and Thomas Partey. Falls to Mishi, who slides into Daniel Waz. Waz breaks forward on goal. Should pass it to Gamero, but fires a shot at Oblak. The next one is just a punt from the keeper towards the end of the game. Waz nods it on to Gamero, who gets across Felipe Luiz, and again fires a shot at the keeper. But when you break down the game as a whole, Atletico's pressing when they dropped off deeper and ensured that no passes could go through the midfield was key. They ensured that Rodrigo was able to drop off but didn't get him behind any fired shots on goal. Griezmann and Correa were unable to be picked up by Pereo and Kondogbia and they dominate the game. They possibly should have scored more goals but in the second half when they did sit off you look at Valencia they get the goal out of defensive lapses from Atletico Madrid and obviously some moments of brilliance from Rodrigo and Kondogbia but they didn't push forward. They didn't look like they had a plan after that. Atletico made a, a um, offensive changes. Jelson Martins couldn't get the job done. Atletico didn't really create many chances after that. And at the end of the game, Old Black had to make two key saves to preserve the point. But let me know what you guys think. Is Atletico Madrid the real deal? Will Valencia finish in the top four? And what do you expect from Antoine Griezmann this season? Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget I upload videos every day. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And that was your daily dose of the interviews.